The National Society's Margaret Cochran Corbin Award honors the memory of the Revolutionary War heroine who took over her husband's cannon when he was mortally wounded at the Battle of Fort Washington in 1775. Four years later, based on this service, Molly Corbin became the first female pensioner of the United States military. Inspired by Corbin's bravery and determination, this unique annual award recognizes men and women in all branches of the military who have displayed outstanding character, commitment, and determination throughout their distinguished careers. Previous winners have included some of our military's most accomplished service men and women. Tonight, our latest honoree, who is the highest ranking female general in the United States military history, takes her place among them. Last year, General Lori J. Robinson was named commander of the United States Northern Command and North American Aerospace Defense Command. In assuming the role, General Robinson became the first woman to lead a top-tier U.S. warfighting command. Northern Command, created after the September 11, 2001 terror attack, connects homeland defense, civil support, and security cooperation in defense of the United States and its interest. The second command, known as NORAD, is a joint operation in which the United States and Canada, Canada defend the airspace over both countries and also monitor sea approaches. General Robinson's distinguished 35-year Air Force career has taken her to Washington, D.C., Hawaii, Iraq, Colorado, and beyond. She deployed as Vice Commander of the 405th Air Expeditionary Wing in Operations Enduring Freedom and Iraqi Freedom. Most recently, as Commander of the Pacific Air Forces, she gained experience in orchestrating military operations across a broad region. Based on her body of work, General Robinson has earned a reputation as a strategic thinking and devoted leader. Her comprehension of the evolving role the Air Force plays, not only in the military, but also in society, makes her a valued asset to our military. The DAR is not alone in recognizing General Robinson's exemplary service. She has received a host of awards and decorations, such as the Defense Superior Service Medal, the Legion of Merit with two oak leaf clusters, and the Distinguished Service Medal with two oak leaf clusters. General Lori Robinson perfectly represents the continuation of the legacy of Margaret Cochran Corbin, the first woman to be recognized for her service to the United States military. General Robinson was recommended for this honor by the Zebulon Pike Chapter, Colorado Springs. General Robinson, on behalf of the National Society, I am honored to present you the Margaret Cochran Corbin Award and welcome you as our keynote speaker. I don't even know where to begin. <laughs> you know, it's so fitting on this Independence Weekend, Independence Day weekend, as I sat there, and I'll get really emotional, so please forgive me, um, doing the Pledge of Allegiance, but most importantly, having the privilege uh, to sing the national anthem loud enough that nobody could ever hear. <laughs> <clears throat> And as I was singing, I had tears streaming down my face because I can't, I can't imagine this. Um, and I get uh, amazingly emotional. So please forgive me if I do that. But um, ma'am, what an amazing welcome. So warm, so inviting, 
I don't even know how to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm humbled and I'm honored to accept the Margaret Corbin Award today. There are so many distinguished and amazing women that have received this award, and it's so special to be included among them. The Daughters of the American Revolution is an outstanding all-volunteer service organization. I can't even begin to tell you how much I want to say thank you all for your commitment to our military personnel and their veterans. Thank you all for the scholarships and financial aid that allow students to pursue their dreams. And thank you for what you just did for the sailors that lost their life and their families. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. When I end up at events like this, I end up learning a lot. So as, I, as my staff was doing research and you know, I was learning about this, I did learn that it has been over 241 years since Margaret Corbin took charge of her husband's cannon uh, during the assault on Fort Washington. And I learned that following the death of her husband, she did continue loading and firing her cannon until she herself was wounded. The Corbins were united in a cause of freedom out of necessity. It didn't matter that she didn't wear a uniform, and it didn't matter that she was a woman. Bold words delivered to England in a declaration were not going to create the free public imagined by the colonels. Courage and action were needed. So she loaded and fired until she was wounded and carried off the battlefield. Like Margaret and John, military service runs in families. I'm part of an amazing Air Force family. My father served for over 30 years in the United States Air Force, and my husband, David, who's sitting over there, and I, we've shared 72 years of combined service. We are so blessed to have shared the great joys and the great challenges of serving this amazing nation. Success on my journey has been a combination of aptitude, attitude, and opportunity. With aptitude and the right attitude, it's amazing the opportunities that will present themselves. I have been fortunate enough to serve and fortunate enough to succeed regardless of my gender. What I admire is that our military is a meritocracy from day one. Every person that raises their right hand and swears the oath starts on equal footing within their chosen service and within their, their career field. A lieutenant is a lieutenant is a lieutenant, whether male or female, and an ensign is an ensign. Everybody begins with an equal paycheck and has equal opportunity to pursue their career aspirations. Meritocracy also means that we select and promote people based on their ability, regardless of gender. After three decades in uniform, I'll tell you this has never been more true than today. As an institution, the military has learned to value aptitude. Men and women of all backgrounds from all over this nation and all over the world have the chance to serve our amazing nation, to learn our values and earn their place in our ranks. The recent expansion of all combat arms positions mean that women joining the services have opportunities today like never before. As you know, women can join special operations forces, the infantry, drive a tank, or serve on a submarine. Their path is clear as long as they possess the drive and the commitment to achieve their goals. Many of these changes have come in the last few years. In December of 2015, the Department of Defense opened all combat jobs to women. The Secretary of Defense, then Ash Carter, announced that there will be no exceptions, period, dot. As you all know, 
That same year, three strong and capable women completed the grueling Army Ranger School. Right, yes. Yes. Last year, the first female soldier joined the Army's elite 75th Ranger Regiment, and Captain Kristen Grist becomes the first female infantry officer. You go, girl. And in January of this year, the first enlisted female Marines graduated from inf infantry school, and second lieutenant Lillian Polacek became the first ever Marine female armor officer and graduated number one in her class. I know for a fact, it is never easy to be the first or to be different. But these women succeeded because they possessed courage, strength, and resolve to accept the challenge. More importantly, they possess the capability and the competence to succeed. Nothing was given to them. While I'm glad to see all the jobs are open to women, I'm also grateful that we haven't changed the standards. The profession of arms is standards-based organization, and it has to be, since we hold the lives of America's treasures. It's fighting men and women in our hands. The wars of the 21st century don't have front lines. Regardless of skill or specialty, women have fought through ambushes, engaged our enemies, and fought with valor. They have been integral part of combat operations in the Middle East and elsewhere since Desert Storm. They have risked their lives alongside their fellow servicemen and women and paid the ultimate price. I'm here tonight because I was given an amazing opportunity to defend the Constitution and serve the American people. My life has forever been changed by service. While awards and accolades are appreciated and respected, bonds of friendship forged throughout adversity and the satisfaction gained through effort will always stay with me. To quote a revolutionary war hero, Nathan Hale, every kind of service necessary to the public good becomes honorable by being necessary. Simply put, we need everyone to support and defend our Constitution, and we need motivated and inspired citizens to join us. We need strong and capable women and men to commit to something bigger than themselves. I encourage each of you and your family members to seek opportunities wherever they are, in the military, in your community, or in fine service organizations, just like this one I've had the privilege to learn about. So ma'am, the entire organization, thank you again to the Daughters of the American Revolution for this recognition tonight. Thank you also to my fellow servicemen and women and veterans, past and present, who have given us all so much. I know I stand on shoulders of heroes. I wish each and every one of you an amazing Independence Weekend. Thank you.